Thank you very much. Uh, my name is Catherine Petreca. I'm the general manager for studio innovation at New Balance, and this is Sean Murphy. He's the uh, director of engineering and innovation for New Balance. So uh, first of all, I really want to thank the folks from 3D Systems. Uh, it's been a great partnership um, over the last year, and you are an amazing group of people, just uh, to a person, so nice, so wonderful to work with, and we're really excited about continued uh, collaboration with all of you. So thank you uh, for having us here. So, before we made an announcement in November, this was really what the world of printed footwear looked like. And beautiful, beautiful, artistic, very creative designs. Um, but from a performance perspective, other than the New Balance track spike there, not something that you would want to put on your feet and go for a run in. And not something that was very accessible for the average consumer, right? So even if you we're into high fashion, you probably wouldn't be getting your hands on one of these. Uh, they're more suited for a, an exhibit, a museum, or a fashion show runway. So, beautiful product, but, but not accessible. Um, when we made our announcement in November that we had moved from making hard plastic parts with printing to soft, uh, durable, cushioned, flexible parts with 3D Systems new material, that was uh, a real breakthrough. Um, for us, and we got a tremendous amount of attention. And I think that attention really um, came from the media, from consumers, from retailers, because this was finally becoming very accessible to them. This is something that they could, would have the opportunity to touch and feel, something they'd be able to, to put on their feet uh, and run in, and really begin to participate in this amazing technology. But. Unless you are uh, very into shoemaking, as Sean and I are, you probably haven't thought a whole lot about what we demand from this little piece of equipment. Um, there is a lot that we expect this to do. And if you think about its history, uh, we have been making traditional foam EVA midsoles for decades. And our competitors, some of the biggest brand names in the world, have been making them as well. Hundreds of millions of pairs of running shoes have been made with traditional foam midsoles. They've been optimized over and over again for cost, for manufacturing efficiency, for performance, for aesthetics. So when you uh, take on the challenge of replacing those parts with a new design path, with Sorry, I think maybe it's when Sean and I get too close together. Um, when you take on replacing those with new materials, new design path, new fabrication tools, uh, that is an amazing challenge and one that, that we're very excited about because the performance of the parts that we have already um, just for work over the past few years is, is exceptional. So I'm going to have... I'm going to ask Sean to uh, come up, and he's going to speak to you a little bit about midsoles and why um, it's such an exceptional opportunity for us uh, with printing and the demands, the very unique demands that we put on these parts. Thanks, thanks Catherine. Yeah, so I'm going to take you through some of the, um, the, the requirements of our shoes and why, why we selected the material that we did. You know, so for... Before we even get a shoe on an athlete's foot, the first thing we have to do is make sure that it can go through our manufacturing process. And our, our manufacturing process is challenging. It, it, it hurts. It basically, the materials have to be chemically resistant. So we put primers and cements on every one of those shoes, and we need to make sure that the material is not going to dissolve or is going to break down based on that. We also put it through a, a, an oven process where we heat the material. It has to withstand 150 degrees Fahrenheit to ensure that it, once again, so that it doesn't start to melt or start to break down. The third thing it has to do is withstand very high pressure. When we go to press that shoe together, it has to withstand 75 pounds per square inch of force over 30 seconds, which is a, it's, it's a lot of force. It's a lot of pressure that's being applied to it. And we want to make sure it doesn't come out like a pancake, that it recovers, that it has resiliency. So once, once it's been made, then we have to worry about it getting on the user's foot. And the user is very demanding on shoes, as you all know. With each, with each impact, there's three to five times body weight. 
that, so for a 150-pound runner, that could be up to 450 pounds of force. And that force is often very concentrated in very small areas, in the heel or in the forefoot. And so we need to make sure that it's going to be resilient and withstand compression set. Um, there's 300,000 plus impacts that occur in, in a 300-mile uh, lifespan of a shoe. So this thing has to withstand that, that endurance and make sure that it's going to feel the same from cycle one to all the way to 300,000 plus. Shoes are also go through the same number of flexes as they do impacts. So th that 300,000 cycles, the shoes are doing the same thing in a flexing and torquing. So, and th these things are all happening at the same time. So you need to make sure this material isn't going to start to stretch tear or, or have issues with elongation issues. So we are constantly testing these materials, making sure that they withstand these, these requirements. Feet are like snowflakes. There's no two that are alike, and the, and the same goes for the way people perceive those shoes. We need to make sure that the, the shoes can, with, uh, can be designed so that the person who's a heel striker, who's over on the left, who, who has very high requirements in the heel, but not maybe so much in the forefoot, that it feels just as well to the person who's a midfoot striker or forefoot striker, who has all their pressure in the forefoot. So we're constantly making sure that our shoes are, are basically designed so that it can withstand um, the requirements for all of the population of runners in the industry. Perhaps just as importantly, th at the end of the day, the shoes do affect the athlete's performance. And we know for sure weight is one of those requirements that we need to make sure that we're hitting. T so we have a three ounce target, a max of three ounce target where we're constantly designing against. Anything more than that, we're, we're, we have to be concerned that it's gonna affect that user's performance. So all of these things, these are the reasons we chose this material, to, because it can withstand the, both the manufacturing as well as the performance requirements, and in the end, produce a shoe that's light enough that is, is, and is comfortable enough for our athletes. i hand it back to you, Great. Kevin. Yeah, and of course, the last requirement is that it has to be beautiful. And again, a very competitive industry that we're in. Um, at the end of the day, if it doesn't look fantastic on the shelf, uh, you're going to hear about it. So I think we, we hit the mark there as well, and we're getting tremendous feedback on how these look and a lot of excitement. Um, I think it can be extremely disruptive in terms of design as well uh, in this space. So a l just a little bit about future benefits. And um, I mentioned that you know, the current foam midsoles that we work with and are, that are on um, 100 million pair of New Balance shoes each year um, have been optimized and optimized uh, over, over decades. And in short order, we've been able, able to really replicate the performance of those parts with printing. So we feel very positive that with, it, with more work, more iteration, more design, uh, more optimization of these printed parts, that we will be able to, in head-to-head -head comparison, provide printed parts that perform better than those traditional foam midsoles. Uh, obviously, as a manufacturer, the um, opportunity for on-demand manufacturing is very, very exciting for us. The opportunity to have somebody have a product be made very close uh, in time and geography to where it's going to be purchased or for someone to buy it and then we make it for them um, is very attractive for us. So if you see on the left hand side, that is an illustration of our work path for our current foam midsoles. There's a lot of uh, back and forth in terms of um, modeling, making molds, um, it takes about a month from the time that you have a finished design, um, 3D design in hand, to when you have a final part under your foot. On the right-hand side is our process with printing. So, of course, there's really not a whole lot of point for us to design these in 2D at all. So we start in 3D with this process, and when we finish our 3D design, we can have that part in hand, underfoot, that very same day. So amazing efficiency and opportunity for us there in the future. Uh, and obviously something that's gotten a lot of excitement is the opportunity for us to utilize printing to 
customize parts for individual performance. Um, and that, that is uh, an incredible opportunity. We can print you know, six different designs of a midsole in one build and test those. And instead of a long iterative process that we traditionally use uh, to refine our parts, we can tr uh, make all these different designs in one build, try them underfoot, and narrow that funnel very quickly. Uh, but New Balance has been very active in this space. We've done it um, with a few products over the years. And actually, last night on the main stage for the keynote, uh, the Intel CEO and our CEO were wearing these shoes with printed midsoles that had been customized based on their own biomechanical data. Um, so we have the ability to do that. And uh, we'll be working pretty aggressively in that space going forward. So consumers are very excited. So just, just like as if you're a tennis player and you have your racket strung exactly the way you like it, or you're a skier and you have your ski boots made, um, you have your ski boots made to fit your, your foot and your leg exactly, uh, we are on the path for that same type of individual customized performance uh, for footwear. And of course, uh, there's been a lot of interest in our announcement about the fact that we will be selling product in April in Boston. Uh, we will have more details on that for the world later this month on exactly how that's going to roll out. Uh, but we're very excited. We have the product here that you can touch and feel. Uh, many of the 3D systems folks have the shoes on their feet. Many of the New Balance folks have the shoes on their feet. Um, so you, can, you have a great opportunity at this show to touch, feel the product, and ask questions. Sean and I will be around in the booth for the next 10, 15 minutes if somebody wants to have individual questions. But um, I'm not sure, Catherine, do we want to do...